going back to that thing we're talking about. So there, so so anyway, yeah. <clears throat> so this whole situation. Um, so there, so there are various parts. Um, first is uh, so we when we initially found you, uh, when, when we initially found the variant that we wanted to look into it more. So that was about six months ago, right? We <clears throat> were looking to do. Well, first of all, we were looking to see if, whether or not this was actually the second mutation because for many years we we couldn't find that second mutation. So you need to have for Sargent's recessive disease for you to have it, you need to have um, uh, a mutation in both copies of ABC4 gene that you have a maternal paternal copy. So you know there are many individuals just walking around with just the one copy, like your parents, right? Uh, uh -huh. And um, and that wouldn't give us starter disease. So we just wanted to be sure that that, that that's what it was. So um, originally, what we wanted to make sure was uh, just to uh, do some we want to do some studies uh, ordinarily with other mutations we can just if we see it enough in patients in enough a large enough group of patients then we can just say okay this is probably a, a mutation that's causing their condition it's not one of those just random uh, very as it's called SNPs these are just, uh, polymorphisms these are just random benign variation that you see in our genome across mm. populations so mm -hmm. so the, in a way in, in genetic medicine we we have to Distinguish between what is a what what spelling error in your gene is actually damaging to the gene and ca causing disease, and what is actually just you know benign variation. So that was kind of the main thing. Um, in doing that, we also found, uh, and I explained this to you, that uh, you have a very unique type of Stargardt disease, um, one that uh, you you probably couldn't. I, I think if you could, a guess based if a physician was experienced enough and they looked at your the, the retina and given your age the, the stage that you're in and they could tell it's a very slow you know moving type of Stargardt disease but anyway we we all the patients that we've that that we've kind of compiled that have this variant all have the exact uh, sort of um disease uh, trajectory that that you have hmm. um we have some patients that are older than you that are at, at um you know, they're a bit more advanced, but basically are functionally exactly just the way you are. Which is yeah, why you were saying that yeah. it was like 12% or something? Uh, we think it could be higher, actually. Okay. So the, this variance, it's a bit, it's a bit strange. Um, so anyway, so that was kind of the point. But so the up, and we did some analyses uh, when you're with, your, uh, with your DNA, and we, 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 we found the, the, the defect in the RNA. So what oh, the, you did? Yeah, so what the RNA is, by the way, so RNA is just um, the gene, but with the, the only the coding region parts is spliced out. Uh -huh. So the DNA is just like the raw, like, you know, um, you know uh, I think a better analogy is just if you imagine a book being the instru uh, an instruction book uh, for assembling like a house, let's say, and then you have just all these pages mm -hmm. uh, in between the actual instructive instruction pages. And then so the RNA, so that the book with all these space spacing pages is your DNA, and then the RNA would just be like another version of this book, but with the spacers taken out. Mm. So um, that second mutation is in one of these spacer pages. So you know it's so it was very weird to you know because these are taken out eventually anyway. So how you know how how could any any mutation in those this, this area affect the condition, right? So what, when we looked at your your RNA, what we found is. Um, Every time this the second second booklet is made, this every time the RNA is assembled, um, there's, there's a pro the way it's the way well first of all the, the way RNA is, is RNA is made is um, the the uh, the coding parts the, the exons are taken out and then spliced together. So what it turns out that if you have uh, some mutations, some variation in the spacer proteins will actually affect the way I'm sorry the spacer uh, introns. Some mutations can affect the way the and the exons are spliced together. So sometimes what happens is you, you can get an exon that's skipped. Mm. Um, you know if that muta if that mutation isn't a part of the intron that's that has that function, um, and sometimes you can have like a duplication of an exon. So you could skip two exons, three exons, and then every once in a while you could have the correct splicing. So um, so when we looked at your RNA, that's what we found. We found that um, you know a very small proportion of your ABC4 RNA at the very end. Is misspliced, hmm. so it's it's uh, uh, that would definitely explain uh, why it's 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 uh, it, it, it explains why it causes diseases. But th this disease, but it's it, it also explains why the disease is actually not so severe because mm -hmm. ordinarily, if you have a mutation in the um, the coding region, then uh, one hundred percent of the protein would be incorrect, right? But in this case. It's just an issue of uh, how efficient the splicing process is. So mm -hmm. it's, you, 
in a way, some, you do have a proportion of really, really good, healthy uh, ABC, ABC of RNA, and then the other you know, proportion of the RNA that's misplaced because of that. I see. Uh, is, is what's causing it, and then that's why it's also it's it's kind of mild because it's not so mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not that you lack the ABC for RNA in that in that gene completely. So so that's that. Uh, so the the more exciting development actually is uh, so we've been working for a long time with this Nijmegen group. So Nijmegen is a city in the Netherlands. It's um, there's a really there's a really uh, prestigious university there, and there's a, a very famous geneticist there. His name is Franz Kremers, and he's um, his work is a little bit esoteric to genetics, uh, so um, his uh, his work's a little difficult to understand even for us. But uh, one thing that he's been working on is uh, so he also works on Stargard, but um, he works he, he does a lot more basic basic kind of basic science, meaning he just works um, you know he does, he does a lot of animal model work, he does a lot of cell work, and uh, one thing that they've been working on for a while is um, uh, correcting. Um, specific types of mutations in ABCA4, right? So correcting mutations is just gene editing, right? So mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm sure you read about like CRISPR and all these different ways that we can gene edit the gene now and gene there and you know gene therapy. There's the R the RP65. Um, this is this labor congenital labor congenital amaurosis. This this uh, they've been doing gene therapy at, at UPenn in Pennsylvania, and uh, they, their clinical trial was just. Uh, uh, just just ended, and the FDA approved uh, gene therapy for that disease. So that disease is uh, it's, it's a retinal degenerative disease, and it's much more severe than Stargardt. It's much more. What's the name of the disease? Uh, well, so the gene uh, is RP65, um, mm -hmm. and then the condition that it causes is something called something called labor congenital amaurosis, LCA. Okay. And um, LCA is kind of an umbrella term for the, for these conditions, um, and uh, it's a very very severe one. It's the kids. Uh, are almost completely blind before they're before they're ten. Oh. So they they did they've been working on gene therapy. Um, uh, this gene, uh, her name is Jean Bennett, Professor Jean Bennett at Penn, and they've they've been working on this gene for a long time. It's very challenging. Again, this is, the condition is much more severe than Stargardt, and uh, they were able to um, effectively deliver the gene um, uh, to correct it in the patient patients and uh, and patients in uh, all patients. Um, um, Basically, uh, whatever stage they were in, stabilized, and then the patients uh, that were treated earlier on um, at, a, at a earlier disease stage actually had a, a return of vision. So it was actually wow. amazing. Yeah, wow. they, they it was pretty well publicized, and they uh, they even I think there was even like a, one of the endpoints that they used to test efficacy was uh, a maze, believe it or not, because um it's it, the maze it's not like a it's not like a mouse maze, but it's a more specific type of obstacle course, and it's it's. Uh, Relevant for these types of patients, and um, they'd show them before and after, and some of the kids, and you know, they would show them bumping into different uh, uh, obstacles, and you know, they would time them to see how well they can navigate the maze. And the, the before was you know, like an hour, you know, just going trying trying to get through, and then um, the after, the post surgery um, uh, video was just them just zipping through it, you know, just being able to go get through without any problems. So it was it was pretty amazing. So that was a huge monumental step for it the field. But anyway, okay, so I digress. I digress. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there, oh, well, not, not, well they, this group is now, so they finished RP65, just kind of going back to it really quickly. Um, they're going to work on abc 4 next. That's one of the genes that they're going to work on. So that's, oh, wow. so that's, that's kind of, uh, you know. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, so back to this. So this group uh, at Nijmegen, they're looking for, so there are a lot of challenges to doing gene therapy. Um, right now, the, the way we do it is we just we do like a brute force. We go in and you know cut out the entire gene, put a brand new copy in, and and then uh, and hope everything works out well. So um, there are a lot of challenges to that. You know, like you know, you when you first of all when you cut out you know uh, a gene, uh, precision is a very important thing, right? You don't want to cut out something else. You don't mm -hmm. want to cut out you know the gene plus you know maybe some other parts of your DNA. And, uh, and then also when you insert the, the entire gene in, you want to make sure, again, it's inserted in the correct spot, it's inserted in the right orientation, it's not like inverted, right? So a lot of challenges. So this group, um, they're working on doing, on ways of correcting, not, rather than replacing the entire book, they're actually just, they want to go in and just actually snip out pages. Um, so they want to do mutation specific correction. So, um, uh, so that's a lot easier because then you don't, you know, you won't, uh, you're not dealing with, uh, you know, you're not dealing with the entire book, the entire gene. You're just looking for that specific page 
and you know if, even if you screw up and you you know there's some off targeting it's not a it's not, not a huge issue so um uh one impediment to doing this type of gene editing uh the reason it hasn't caught on is because um uh the way it's done is um at first you, you have to uh suppress they, what they do is they send a like a little protein into your dna and then they they will shut down the the gene completely um and uh when you do that in, in if you do that in a part of the gene in the coding part of the gene then the entire uh then you start you you completely lose the uh, the, the, the the protein right so the, the the this part of the dna isn't red at all um, so, so it's a bit, we can do this in, in animals. We can show that it works so, because later, when you turn it back on, you know the gene is normal again. But it's problematic in people. The 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 twist uh, for our case is that your gene, your one of your mutations, is in one of the non-coding parts of the book. So we can shut that part down without any problems, hmm. right? So, um, uh, so what they're do so. Um, uh, their research over the years has been focused on just shutting down, uh, replace, uh, correcting uh, cystic mutations and spelling errors in these non-coding parts of the book, and um, uh, it, we, you know, we we we've been working with them for 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 a while now, and they had the idea of actually going in, and uh, in, in your case, uh, and, um, and and we're, and you know, in patients that we have uh, these these uh, non-coding mutations. They had the idea of actually just going in and shutting that 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 non-coding part down permanently without actually doing even doing a correction. So it's even so you're even skipping another step. So um so this 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 uh, I, I probably didn't explain it uh, as well as they could probably explain this, but so uh, but this, no, I this, this process is called um oligo it's antisense oligonucleotide um, therapy, and um, antisense meaning it's uh, antisense is uh, so that. You know our DNA is uh, it's coded. It, it, there's a specific code, and then you know it's D DNA is double stranded, right? So the the opposite strand is a is a is the complementary co uh, code to the, mm -hmm. to the other strand. So it's called there's a sense strand, the anti sense strand. So the way they they shut it down is they take another an anti sense strand, and then they that will bind to the part of the the DNA that we want to shut down, and then um, oligonucleotide just means many nucleotides. So it's just the long strand of an, uh, opposite nucleotides. They use it, they shut the protein down, do what they need to do, take it back out, and then everything's okay again. Mm. In your case, we can just you have a mutation in a part that's not so important um, functionally. Uh, it's important in the splicing, but we could actually ju it, th this this new mutation is sort of an added thing, right? So, what all they all they have to theoretically all they have to do is they just have to um, send this uh, this anti this anti sense strand into your DNA, shut down this part permanently, and then we we, we have the pro we have the cells um, uh, rep du replicate your DNA and do this do the exon splicing, and we can see what happens. And it turns out we did this in. In uh, your DNA, we did this, and a few other people with the other different mutations in the other in the spacer per, uh, regions, and um, we got normal RNA. Yeah, it's really? amazing. Yeah, so so it's really interesting. So um, uh, this is how what we have now. Uh, we don't know what that means. Uh, you know, in you know, if if these cell, we're only just doing this in a dish of your cells. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know if this actually works. We don't know how how we could. We have to work on a way of delivering this sort of antisense strand into people right now, but um, but but it's, yeah, it's amazing. But you're working on it. Yeah, we're working. Yeah, well, they're mainly working on it actually. And now, who's they? So this is the the the, the Nijmegen group. And the one in Pennsylvania or the one in no no this uh, is the one, one in, in the Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah, so they're working on it, and and uh, you know we're we're uh, this is completely their realm okay. of research, and um, and uh, yeah. It, it was amazing, yeah. So it's it was it's proof of principle. Um, oh, great. You know, we we know it works theoretically now. Uh, we know it works in human cells. Uh, mm -hmm. We're gonna now probably they're probably now gonna just uh, they're gonna try it in an actual entire organism. So probably mm -hmm. they'll do it in mouse. Did mice. they recently have a conference over there? Yes. Uh, well, no. They actually my so our supervisor just went over there for um, they had like a little mini Stargard. Uh, conference but it I don't was know Larry was. Larry Anuzi there no no I don't think so I doubt because it. I saw him about a month ago yeah and then I was telling him that we'd done this and that I came in for my RNA because this and he says oh I'm gonna be at a con I'm gonna be at the conference there in a couple weeks 
I thought maybe it was. Maybe he was there then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's possible. It was, I, I wasn't aware that this was... Because uh, he's... Because I've always just assumed that this clinic and his clinic are leaders in the Star Guards. Yeah, I know. He for sh- definitely... Um, Dr. Yunuzi is... Uh, he's... Um, there... Uh, let me... How should I say this? Um, so, uh, you know... Dr. Nuzi's clinic is a, it's a private practice, and mm-hmm. um, they do a lot of clinical research. Um, I, 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 I wasn't sure if the, the, this uh, this conference, as far as I was aware, is a, is, is a sort of a very basic science, a genetics kind of conference. Mm-hmm. So uh, probably there there I didn't expect there to be a lot of uh, you know, and it's very new stuff. It's not like a clinical trial yeah. result where okay. doctors can use this you know. So he very well could have been there actually i mean that that would that that's quite a coincidence if if, it, if he weren't at this one specifically sure. so probably he was there yeah I, so anyway yeah so so we're working on it and maybe maybe something will develop in the next few years is that what you're saying yeah so right now they they there is a uh, novartis uh, it's a it's a swiss biotech company and mm-hmm. it's a ph- big huge pharmaceutical company in europe uh, they've invested a few billion dollars into a um, i forgot the acronym is i think it's, in, it's probably in swiss german this acronym but, mm-hmm. there, but it's it's an institute to, to study to develop uh, um, to, to the therapeutic approaches to to retinal diseases and their top priority is Stargard. That's like the first uh, really? thing they're going to work on. And then the, 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 the two people heading the institute are um, uh, Hendrik Scholl. Hendrik Scholl, is, uh, he was a professor at Hopkins, and he, he now is the chairman at and Basel, uh, University of Basel uh, in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. And um, he was the director of Progstar, which is this huge uh, nationwide um, uh, Stargard disease uh, natural history study at Hopkins, uh, centered at Hopkins, but nationwide. And uh, and then he just he was just he just moved to Basel to become the chairman there. But his uh, you know his emphasis in his career long, in a long time has been Stargard. And then the other person, so he's like the medical director of this new inst- this Novartis Institute. And then um, the other person, um, the, the 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 head of the the, the basic science, the biomedical science uh, portion of it is, is someone named Botan Roska, and he's another um, he's a Hungarian I think Hungarian. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, very, very, very renowned Hungarian um, uh, stem cell biologist that's working also in Switzerland, Basel, and so now they're they're going to be uh, they're they're starting up this institute and uh, this uh, oligonucleotide um, on their agenda will be different types of gene therapy and then mm-hmm. uh, included will be this oligonucleotide uh, therapy, oligo- well, anti-sense oligonucleotide. Well, wow, there's a lot of development in just six months. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, actually, no. This 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 uh, this institute actually that they've been it's been planned for a few years. Yeah, um, but, uh, but we just we we just learned that they're they just put out their list of priorities mm-hmm. um, in the next you know. Uh, when it starts up and so what what should I do just stay in touch and yeah just stay, uh, I mean we uh, I mean you're, you're local I know uh, so um, there really isn't much else I mean we have your cells here right mm-hmm. so um, there you know there, there could be a chance that we uh, I suppose you know um, let me think I mean yeah I mean just you know, we'll let you know. We'll let you yeah. know. I mean, once, and once, because you know, you we were you were used as the proof of principle um, to, to for this uh, this 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 therapy. Then oh, obviously wow. you would be the you would be the you'd be on the you'd be the first person we would treat to really? when it becomes oh, available, amazing. right? I mean, w- this theoretically be this can be applied to basically any kind of mutation that's mm-hmm. like similar to yours, but you know, okay. you're the one we use to demonstrate that this is possible. Huh. So so you know, don't move away. Maybe <laughs> so just stay in New York. Yeah. Well, Winston, I am moving away. You are? Oh, you told me this. Uh, F- Florida or Minnesota? Oh, right, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's a hop, skip, and a jump. I'll be here. Anything happens? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not an it's not an issue. Actually, we have a collaborator out in Minneapolis. So what's his name? Uh, it's actually a group of people. Um, they they uh, they're they're um, part of the kind of growing ophthalmology department over there. So it's not a very specific uh, group of individuals, but they've gotten a lot of the, we've, we've through one, uh, through a uh, German company, we've sent them a lot of uh, mm-hmm. uh, some of the instruments for them to set up. So it's- You know the name of the, where the clinic is or what it is? Yeah, it's, it's the Twin Cities uh, 
whichever the medical, I, I can't remember offhand, the, the, the medical school, whichever, I know there's like a lot of the University of Minnesota, I think Twin Cities is where the medical school is, right? Right, and it's uh, the University of Minnesota would be the, the, the big medical school. Right, yeah, I just forgot which campus, uh, which city it's in. Oh, I it's in it's Minneapolis. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, okay, just, so it's at the university, I just wondered. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. It was a, because there's a Phillips Institute, there, there's some other I, I don't know if the Phillips Institute is an, an I Institute that I've heard of, I just don't know where they were. But yeah, no, I, I'll, um, I was just planning on coming back, you know, whenever, because I certainly have friends here, I'll be coming back and... Yeah, no, no, don't worry, don't, believe me, this is not, if, if, yeah. so, you know, when this stuff becomes available, it's going to be pretty groundbreaking, it's, geography is not going to be an issue, I mean, Good. As I've, as long as my name is on that list, that's what I'm. It'd be great. Yeah, no, it, of course, because again, you know, you it was, thanks to you. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to wow. know uh, know this. So, um, yeah. So don't worry. I mean, I, I've always a lot of patients kind of, that come through are always worried that um, somehow there's going to be some breakthrough in treatment, and they're they're gonna, they're not going to know about it. But mm -hmm. um, even if we've even if we drop off the face of the earth, you know. People, everyone should remember that these these clinical trials and the companies that may develop, you know, and sponsor sure. these trials, these are pharmaceutical companies and investors that want to make money, right? So, and, you know, we're treating a very rare disease. So, mm -hmm. if there is a patient to be treated and, you know, an insurance company is going to pay for this, they're going to find it. And they're not, they're, they're not going to, and if it means flying you, you know, and, you know, we have a case of situations like this now where we have clinical trial here and there aren't so many patients, but, um, they the companies need this drug to be approved let's say so they'll f they'll basically pay for the accommodations for patients to enroll in trial hmm. so um, I see. okay that's 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 that won't be an issue at all yeah it, well this is really uh i mean i really appreciate you taking the time to explain all this to me and you know because it's when you sit out in the waiting room and you don't know you know yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but but and i'm glad i recorded it because i can share this with you know i can read we listen to it and understand it again, but I think I understand it pretty well. My wife, you know, I think I might have told you, my wife. Yeah, she's, is, a, she's a physician, right? Yeah. Yeah, and she actually worked on the floor below here until she retired. Yeah, yeah, That's I remember telling you that. But she, so she's very interested in this stuff too, because. Yeah, and I remember she, she was very, I mean, I, it was it was very talking to her. She was, you know, I felt like she was definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's in a, it's a, it's a very exciting time. There's a lot of, um, I think, I, I don't know why, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's just sort of, you know, episodic, but, you know, there was a period before, or this one where we, we really just didn't have much going on. Oh. Um, Funding and uh, interest from both public and private sectors. Mm -hmm. So it was, just, it, was just, it was just very, very lucky. Now, otherwise, mm -hmm. with a condition like this. Well, and I was lucky to be at this clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We, we, we're, we're lucky to have each other. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, well, thank thanks, you. Thank you for spending time with me, Lisa. Yeah, of course, yeah. Thank you. I'm very glad that I remembered the, that I had your. Um, Message that I could mess text message you. Yeah, yeah. Some, I, I'm in a different part of the building now, so uh -huh. I, I'm not. I'm glad that I texted you. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have known you. Were yeah, we're here and, and catch up on this because it's just encourage. You know, I know, as much as anything, you want you want to feel positive. Yeah. You know, because it's it's depressing to be losing your sight and you know doing things and you know. Yeah, I, I would have sent you, so right, they, right now they're working on, uh, I think they need, they need to publish these results, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I would have sent you the paper anyway. And that might, okay. So what I'm telling you is actually just some unpublished, uh, yes, sure. uh, it, it's already right now, it's uh, already getting, it'll, it'll, I think this will be published in probably some pretty high impact genetics journal, so I would have sent that to you anyway. Well, that's okay. Sure. This is a preview of what that is. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to stay in touch with you then. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Oops. Two weeks. Two weeks. You've got to go on home and continue packing. We sold our apartment. Wow. Yeah? I, I almost want to say you're going to a better place. So that's a great place. That's good.
Well, actually, one of the things that happened was, you know, so it was about two months ago, I said, well, I better, I better do my follow-up, sir. And uh, went to see Dr. Nuzzi, and then when I did here, I said, well, I don't have anything until the beginning of August. I said, well, let me call it, you know, put me down for that, but then let me call back when I had an opening today. So, you know, right. so thanks again. Yeah, of course. We'll stay in touch, okay? Great. Yeah, thanks, sir. Boing, boing, boing. 